Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the shop. We really don't know what to do today. We did make this. It's a slug of aluminum. It was one inch, we had to turn it down. I've got that in there in the telestock. And here's that famous bit I made. They can do all kinds of stuff with it. So I'm using this to face this off. Because I just saw this off with a hacksaw. Well, it's not going to be straight. So this gets me down or to get everything straight. I think you know what I mean. I'll snap a photo with that. That's that bit that I made a while back. Okay, stay tuned. We'll go find something else to do, even if it's wrong. Okay, here's what this piece looks I don't know what it was. It was something I'd had I was making or whatever. But it's getting pretty beat up. From tapping it in there, straightening it with a punch, and I'll drive it out with a punch to get it out of there. But it works. It's sacrificial. I mean, there's a little burr on there. You can see that little sharp edge. And sand off. Then you can also, uh, you know, put on a flat piece of steel, lap it. I want to be able to get a clean edge. We already tried making a whistle. We gave up. Uh, we had the little, we made it like uh, the one that has the notch. You put that piece there with a so you had a round slug in there. Like when you made the wooden whistles, if you ever watch you make them. And then you had the little piece with the slot cut off it. Well, you could blow through it and work, but I wanted to put compressed air, so I had it made to where I could put a fitting in the end and blow the air, and it won't work. Because it's not the pressure of the air, it's the volume of the air. So your lungs could actually make the whistle work better than, uh, than an air compressor, even that low, low amount of air. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Uh, we're still looking for something different because the steam whistle is made with the top capped off and it's got a fixture with a little groove around there where the air comes out, the ones I could find. But we're still looking. We're going to make something out of this stuff. One inch ID, seven eighths inch OD. See, it's not too dirty inside there. It's got some corrosion. It's not really rock. It's whatever dirt you want to call it. Them scratches are for running to punch up and down it, banging it. Because I dropped my punch here to get this slug out of the end when I had it stuck in there. Okay, enough of that. And I drive this in there as straight as I can, and it kind of self centers in the lathe. You don't have to be exact. I mean, I just use some penetrating oil. I like using marble mist oil, and I lost my little bottle, and I'm not looking for it. I don't like to use a regular oil on aluminum or brass. I use marble mist oil if I'm going to lubricate where, like, where the dead center goes. You see how gummy that gets? That gets that black nasty with just penetrating oil. Yeah, this piece is all beat up. But, like I said, it serves its purpose. If I ever want to put a piece of can The limit on my lathe is 6 inches. Folk eyes. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll think of something else to do. Here's a neat little tool I made the other day. This was a drinking straw. See how big that is? It's like five, six, it's like three eighths diameter. Here's most easy. If you buy them in a package, you get a brush to brush them with. You can get them in a Walmart. You can see them all over for drinking cups. But this came with a cup. It was big, monster size. So I cut it off with a tubing cutter and took the burr off. And to put the pencil in there, just a piece of pencil about that long. And it's so tight you shave the paint off That's why you see the paint gone. And that's just halfway sanded to a blunt point because I don't draw with this. I use it to mark metal with. Okay. So if you have a piece of aluminum. If I can do this one handed. You can see that. You make it darker. And that's just crammed. I kind of squished the brass part. So I like a little a little bit of the wood left. I kind of squished where the brass piece was and crammed it in. So if you pushed on hard, you'd probably push your eraser in there. But I can't tell you how long it is not grabbing the ruler. But it's just something nice to add to my tools and punches. You know, instead of regular pencil. Just something kind of nice. Just, just a doodad. Uh, on to something else. I said, we're, we're running out of ideas for Sunday in the shop. Look, we got a blank slate. We don't know what to do. We'll just stare at, how about stare at this for two minutes? I don't think so. 
We'll be back. We'll think of something. Well, I know you're all tired of me doing tools, but we're going to show you the new drill in action. We get up the tripod and set up. We'll actually show you buffing with that scrubby wheel. All I can tell you, that looks like a B-A-L. Looks like a 1 and a C. USA 403, and that's one half inch. I call that a tapered drift punch. And here comes that train when you're ready to record. I heard it before I started recording. We don't know if we get all this mushroom stuff off. We may file that off. So, stay tuned. We'll show you the new drill in action. The $20 drill. Okay, here's our new tool shop drill that we had the video on. This is what I like. This is plugged directly into the wall. More or less. Because I just got a switch over here. So, you can say it's plugged in the wall. But this is what I like about this. Then you can plug it in. Dust your feet. There you go. There's my scrubby thing. We're going to show you a little bit. If I have to go shut the door. We're going to show you a little bit how good these scrubby wheels work. So stay tuned. Okay. We're just using the switch on our uh, router control. You can use full speed or the variable speed. So we're just using the switch as an on and off so we can leave it set there. See this is if you use the... See it's not set very high. It just makes it convenient so we don't have to mess with the trigger down there. That way you know what I mean. You don't have to have that. What I'm trying to say is you can just plug it in the wall. We'll show you a little bit of how this works. Scrubby pad. I think it'll take this stuff off. We'll find out. I know you can't hear me over the tool, even though I'm right behind the camera. Okay, we'll finish cleaning this up. Looks like silver paint, doesn't it? We'll finish cleaning this up and show you what it looks like. We're not going to polish it. We're just going to use the tool. It's a tool. We're not, we're not going to polish it with all the rubbing, the compounds and everything. So, stay tuned. We'll finish this up and show you what it looks like when it's done. So, I like to share stuff when I find it. I mean, I don't know what it costs, Harbor Freight. I just call it scrubby wheels. Polycarbonate, whatever. It's got a big name. To me, it's a scrubby wheel. There, that's how to remember it. Stay tuned. Okay, this is so shank keeps blowing the camera out. You should always try to take this stuff off. This stuff can chip off and fly, and they say it can has about the power of a 22 bullet going into your leg or your arm. If you hit it with a hammer hard enough, is what I was told. If you go across the wheel as fast as you can and as light as you can, you will not get big deep scratches. Which is kind of hard to see the camera's blown out. We'll take a picture of it. You'll see it's not got a lot of deep scratches to it. If you watched when I first shoved it on the wheel real hard. Okay, stay tuned. My battery symbol is flashing. This happens all the time. I'm glad I have two rechargeable batteries though. Okay, before we go, we have a mystery tool. What is it? I'll let you think about while I show you another one. I'll give you a hint. I used to go to a gas company. I worked for a record mechanic shop. 
and we'd work on a gas company trucks that, that carried propane, delivered it. Now, I made this tapered to make it into another tool. Let's see how that step. So even with that on there, it still has the same function. I wasn't going to lose that function. You know what this is used for? We'll tell you when we come back what I was told. Okay. I acquired this a long time ago. I have a big one of these. It's rust I'm going to restore. I have not seen one this small. Now, I know I've looked through Northern Tool, Harbor Freight. I, look, I don't look through a lot of websites. I don't shop a lot of websites. But using the pull-out seals and stuff. But have you ever seen one that small? About six inches long. I never have. I don't really want to clean it up. I just want to leave it alone. Now, the end's been beat and abused, and I probably beat on it a little bit. In here... I really don't want to clean it up too much. You know I probably will. Because I'm going to end up doing the same thing with it again. Okay. This is what I was told this was for. And I don't have a piece of pipe. Uh, they solder pipes together like copper pipe and stuff. for uh, Furnaces might have a real small copper pipe. And I don't know why. Maybe stoves and stuff. Things like for the pilot light or somewhere. Uh, you had really small, look like a brake line on a stove. I was told this was a swedgy piece of pipe. If you had two pieces of pipe the same diameter, okay. I think this might be the right size. If two pieces of pipe the same diameter, you could stick them together by putting this in here and expanding it, okay, driving it in there. And making it bigger and the other one will fit inside of it to solder on copper pipe. So brass, now I don't know about that. I've never got away with soldering really too much brass. Uh, I've never really did it. I've soldered copper pipe. I'm not a plumber. But it says 3 8 so it's probably for 3 8 This is probably 5 16 in inside diameter. But that's what I was told. Switch the pipe. They make a muffler tool where you can span the pipe. Like say it was just a little bit too small to put your muffler pipe in. And that used with an air ratchet because you'd be there all day long with a breaker bar ratchet. I don't know if you've ever seen one of them. It's a big round thing of metal with springs and it just gets bigger and bigger the more you crank it down. And you see the muffler shop use it with the air impact. So that's what that is. I'll take a picture of that just for the fun of it. So thanks for watching this week. It's kind of a short one this week. Uh, I just need to think of more ideas. So. Thanks for tuning in. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.